Thank you.
coverage of the Holy Mass is brought to you by Mr. and Mrs. Nicolas Cadillo and family, Mr. and Mrs. Alfred and Julie Go and family, Mr. and Mrs. Rene and Nanit Avila and family, Engineer Frederick and Mrs. Wanda Fekabahog and family. of the Holy Mass is brought to you by Mr. and Mrs. Nicolas Cadillo and family, Mr. and Mrs. Alfred and Julie Go and family, Mr. and Mrs. Rene and Nanit Avila and family, Engineer Frederick and Mrs. Wanda Fekabahog and family. of the Holy Mass is brought to you by Mr. and Mrs. Nicolas Cadillo and family, Mr. and Mrs. Alfred and Julie Go and family, Mr. and Mrs. Rene and Nanit Avila and family, Engineer Frederick and Mrs. Wanda Fekabahog and family. Every time we come and gather as a community, especially in the Holy Eucharist, we are always experiencing God's greatness and His love and forgiveness. And so we are actually coming here and sharing that very gift 
so that we will be able to praise and thank God with all our hearts. And together with this and our intentions, let us include in our Mass today the intentions of those who are commemorating their birthdays or anniversaries today. And also we continue to pray for the needs of all those who tirelessly support the Apostolate of CCTN through prayer intentions, love offerings, sponsorships, and reassuring goodwill. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Dear sisters and brothers, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. to God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest. O oh God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. So our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam, ate, have eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, the woman whom you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, the serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We too believe, and therefore we speak, knowing that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you, so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent should be destroyed, we have a building from God a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came home with his disciples. Again the crowd gathered, making it impossible for them even to eat. When his relatives heard of this, they set out to seize him, for they said, He is out of his mind. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, and that is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder the house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness but he is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. His mother and his brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent word to him and called him. And a crowd seated around him told him, your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. But he said to them in reply, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those seated in the circle, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. A blessed Sunday to us. From our own 
human perspective. If you are being asked, what would have Mary reacted or how would Mary react when he heard Jesus about saying, who are my mother and my brothers and my sisters? This is a very interesting connection no? in order to get a feel of what the essence of the message of Jesus is all about. Would you think that Mary would be insulted in such a way? What is your answer? No or no? You have no choice. In any way, Mary would not be insulted. Why? Knowing the very train of, you know, the presentation in the Gospels, especially in St. Luke, Mary has been presented in the very first sense as a person, a lady, a woman who gave his or herself to the will of God. So when Jesus said, whoever does the will of God is my brother, my sister, and my mother, Mary is basically actually confirmed. So we don't have to worry about it. Mary did not also worry about it anyway. The only thing is, are we doing the will of the Father? That's the main point of the question. But then something has to come to, to arouse or to arise from the many different sides and dimensions of living our lives. Because we have so many things to do, we have so many projects to finish, we have still so many ambitions and plans. There are so many things that somehow come across and make an, an interesting obstacle to following the will of God in our lives. And because of this, we are sometimes dislodged or madiskaril. You know, I like the word discaril because it actually is describing a train. No? Usaka train ba? Na madiskaril gani, wa na siya magsubay sa iyang kaugalingon nga rail. No? So sometimes, if not always, we are like that. But what keeps us intact in this particular understanding, despite our weaknesses, Despite the devil's temptation all around us, there is always the mercy and the love and forgiveness of God the Father. Now, as the first reading was read earlier, I was focused on that particular panel there. Kay naadiha ang God the Father, si Adam, o si Eve, o ang snake, because that's the first reading. You know, if you, are, if you have time, no, or you enter the chapel earlier, no, Try to scan certain panels here because there are, these are really very beautiful reminders of the scriptures. Nagadina, I was enjoying and at the same time reflecting on that very part of the, of the chapel. And it reminds us of the sin you know, that, Adam or, that Adam and Eve committed. But then God always has a promise. He always has a will. And that will is always forgiveness and love. And that's the reason why if we connect this with what Jesus said in today's gospel reading also, whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. No? And this is a very difficult text to, 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 to explain, to understand. But the bottom line here is the sin against the Holy Spirit is a sin against faith. Not having faith at all is considered as the sin against the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is always there at the very heart of the forgiveness of sins. And if you recall having a gun to confession, that's the prayer, that's the, the absolution that the priest is saying to you. That the forgiveness of sins through the sending of the Holy Spirit will be materialized. And if we don't have faith in the Holy Spirit, then how can our sins be forgiven? And so this is a very remarkable and challenging, and challenging piece of truth that we have to deal with. The most important thing is, despite the business and the business that we have, we have a time to also take a look deep in our hearts. 
And what that forgiveness is all about always has something to do with how God has given up His Son for us. He stretched out His hands between heaven and earth as He was hanging on the cross. Precisely because the beautiful connection here is when Adam and Eve sinned against God, they were expelled from paradise. And so they were out of the garden. That's the reason why man is also being exiled. No? That's what we always say when we pray the Hail Holy Queen. No? And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. And how do we picture that exile? We are here in the world below, and that is our destiny, heaven. But how can we reach? How can we uh, be able to, to go to that direction, to that destination, if there is no bridge? And what is that bridge? That is the cross. When the Lord Jesus hang between heaven and earth, we are given the access. And that is very much seen in the sense of forgiveness, of his loving kindness and fathomable mercy. And so please do not forget this. I have never forgotten this. I received this text many years ago, all, more than 20 years, I think. But there is a very beautiful uh, play of words no, in the text that I received. And this is the text. If you look straight, if you focus on the cross, you see there three nails, ka nails, three nails, the two hands and the feet. Three nails and one thorn, usaka corona. Okay? Three nails plus one thorn equals forgiveness. No? Sometimes call me kayo pamatiyon. But there is a very deep sense into it. What is forgiveness? Three nails plus one thorn. Because that is through the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord when He hung between heaven and earth, embracing us, stretching us, stretching, stretching, uh, stretching it, His hands for us. That is where forgiveness is given. And the word forgiveness always is at the heart of give, gihatag. No? And so we have to receive it. But upon receiving it, we do have to forgive each other. That's why the Lord Jesus left us a very beautiful prayer reminding us, forgive us our trespasses, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For as men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Mindful of Jesus' identification of his family as those who follow the will of God, let us now pray to our Heavenly Father that we too may have faith in his Son and resolve to do what is pleasing to him. For every petition, let us now say, 
Lord, listen to our prayer. Lord, listen to our prayer. May the church, with its clergy and servants, proclaim the gospel with priceless joy and unwavering faith, we pray. Lord, listen to our prayer. May government officials be aware of their intrinsic ties to the people they serve and avoiding enacting laws which are detrimental to human life and dignity, we pray. Lord, listen to our prayer. May religious men and women heed the call to renew their vows, not only in the ritual, but more importantly, in faithfulness, witness to the one to whom they have consecrated their lives, we pray. Lord, listen to our prayer. May those who have passed away trusting in Christ be received into the dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven, we pray. Lord, listen to our prayer. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, listen to our prayer. Heavenly Father, listen to your children who seek you day and night, but most importantly in this Eucharist, that faith may be granted to them, so that we may stand with your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Pray, dear sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. 
Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, with Midifil and Ruben, his assistant bishops, all bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may Mary to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
Oh, oh God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all oh, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's now share with each other the sign of peace. Shalom. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual Communion 
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. O oh my God, my only hope, I have placed all my trust in you, and I know I shall not be disappointed. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil, and lead us to what is right, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oratio Imperata for Subbuswak. God our Father, you have created us into your own image and likeness. You have adopted us as your children through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and have inspired us through the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray for the realization of this endeavor, Subbuswak, a watershed event that aims to give birth to the proposed diocese of the now in the north of Cebu and Karkar in the south. Open wide our eyes to glean over the geographic, demographic, financial, and institutional concerns of this our dream, so that we may be able to erect local churches that radiate communion, practice participation in governance and authority, 
and adhere to co-responsibility in mission for a synodal church. All this we ask you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Señor Santo Niño, Our Lady of Guadalupe, San Pedro Calungson. For the final blessing, I hope we will not forget what forgiveness is all about. It radiates in or through the three nails and one crown of thorns. One plus three equals forgiveness. The Lord be with you. Now bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Be gracious to your people, O Lord, and do not withhold consolation on earth from those you call to strive for heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Eucharist has been offered. Go in peace. of the Holy Mass is brought to you by Mr. and Mrs. Nicolas Padillo and family, Mr. and Mrs. Alfred and Julie Go and family, Mr. and Mrs. Rene and Nanit Avila and family, Engineer Frederick and Mrs. Wanda Fekabahog and family.